Hello out there, space fans. This is Brett Tingley here with Space.com at Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida. As you can see over my shoulder here, we're only about nine hours away from the planned third launch attempt of Artemis One Space Launch System rocket. It's an exciting day. You can really feel the excitement in the air as everybody's hoping for a successful launch this time. Last night during a teleconference with Artemis mission managers, uh, the Artemis team said we're still go for launch today. There's nothing standing in the way of the launch attempt tonight. One of the chief concerns with this launch has been the damage done by Hurricane Nicole, which was quickly downgraded to Tropical Storm Nicole, as it stripped off a piece of insulating caulking that was on the outside of the Orion spacecraft. And there was some worry that it would cause unwanted airflow that could cause excessive heating around the spacecraft. However, in last night's teleconference, uh, mission managers assured us that all of their models, all of their analyses say we are still go for launch. Uh, as you can see, there's a little bit of cloud cover moving in. The last we heard yesterday was that we had a 90% chance of favorable weather at launch time. So let's ho hope these clouds uh, blow out in time. As uh, you remember, Artemis 1 is the first planned launch of NASA's Artemis program, which will return humans to the moon, with the eventual goal of establishing a permanent presence on the moon. Artemis 1 will launch the Orion spacecraft into a rather unique orbit around the moon, um, and then it will come back about 26 days later and splash down in the Pacific Ocean. The mission is designed as kind of a proof of concept of the uh, vehicle and the orbit that will be used in later Artemis missions. Artemis 1 will also launch a uh, tranche of 10 cube satellites. These are tiny kind of microwave oven sized satellites that will be performing various scientific experiments in orbit around the moon, uh, many of which are designed to help plan for later Artemis missions. Uh, the planned liftoff of Artemis 1 tonight begins, it's a two hour window that begins at 1.04 a.m. Eastern time. That's 6.04 GMT. So it's gonna be a late night here. Everybody's gearing up and uh, everybody's excited. So as long as the mission management teams find nothing uh, else today that's gonna to stand in their way, hopefully we will see a launch tonight. It, it should be pretty spectacular here at night. And uh, we're all very excited. Let's see if we have any questions. If anybody's out there wants to know anything about the Artemis launch, we can answer it. We are also going to be live several more times throughout today. Uh, fueling of Artemis 1 begins around 3.30 today. So we should be live about 4 p.m. during fueling. Hopefully everything will be great. And don't forget, starting at 3.30, you can watch live here on space.com, courtesy of NASA. I think we have a question we can answer. Hi, Brett. Yes, we do have some questions getting ready. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Vanessa Munns. Um, I am the uh, social media editor for space.com here at Live Science. Um, it looks like we may have lost Brett for a little bit, but we are ready to take your questions. Here he is. Lost you there. Uh, yep. So we are back and ready to go. Brett, yeah. one of our first questions is um, from Paul Bosley. Is this going to be going on for the full nine hours? Uh, we will not be streaming live. However, you starting at about three o'clock um, on NASA TV, you can watch the whole day live, starting with the fueling process. Um, so be, we'll be streaming it. We'll be hosting it right on our homepage, space.com. You can also watch it at nasa.gov. And uh, I believe there are a few live streams that are going all day um, elsewhere on the internet. But as far as our coverage, we will begin streaming live at about 3.30. Uh, I'll be tuning back in at about 4 p.m. to give an update with the fueling process. Thanks, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Our next one is from Eric Stifler. What will be different about this rocket when there's humans on board? Um, well, the rocket, so this is the SLS Block 1 that's launching now. The SLS Block 1B uh, will follow. So there are some incremental changes to the Space Launch System rocket um, that will occur, that, will, that are planned for when humans will be on board. Um, not much will change. I can tell you in the Orion capsule that's on the rocket right now behind me, um, there are a few human-sized test masses on board, if you will. There are two mannequins um, that are designed to test kind of the radiation environment and the ability of the Orion spacecraft to shield them from that radiation. And uh, there's actually a very interesting zero gravity indicator that we'll see floating around in the cabin once Orion hits zero gravity. So. 
Uh, not much will change, Eric, because this mission is actually designed to test the exact technologies, the exact spacecraft that will be on later Artemis crewed missions. Awesome. Um, Thanks, Eric. A few more questions from sure. um, another one from a different Eric. How many more unmanned Artemis missions are planned? Artemis 1 is the only uncrewed Artemis mission uh, planned so far. Artemis 2, which is currently scheduled to launch in 2023, if all goes to plan, uh, will be a crewed mission. It's not actually going to put that crew on the moon. They're just going to go up in orbit and come back down um, just to test the Orion spacecraft again. If you remember with the Apollo missions, there were, what, 10 uh, missions before we even put people on the moon. So there's a lot of testing that has to go involved with these spacecraft before uh, we can put crews on them. If Artemis 2 in 2023 is successful, then we will see Artemis 3 in 2024 or 2025 at the earliest. And those will actually see humans return to the moon near the lunar south pole. So that's going to be very exciting. Thanks, Eric. And John McKay has the question I think we are all asking today. Has there been any issues so far with the rocket? So far, we have not heard anything since last night's uh, media teleconference. We heard from Mike Serafin, who is the Artemis mission manager at NASA headquarters in Washington. He said there's nothing standing in the way. We are go right now. So a lot of things can change during the fueling process. As you remember, uh, with previous launch attempts, it was during that fueling process that several glitches and issues popped up. Um, there were, with the first attempt, there was an issue getting one of the engines cooled down to the proper temperature. And with the second launch attempt, there was a hydrogen leak on one of the seals used to pump the fuel into the rocket. So, so far, no issues, but fueling, that's, that's the sensitive time. So we'll know a lot more in about three hours, four hours from now. Thanks, John. Fantastic. Um, and Devin asks, what is the schedule for future missions if this one is successful? Right, so a lot of, a lot of the timeline can change. Um, as things pop up, as you know, with Artemis 1, you know, we're uh, a few months behind the first launch attempt. So 2023 is the first planned date for Artemis 2, which will be the first crewed Artemis mission. Uh, following a successful Artemis 2, we can hope to see a Ar crewed Artemis 3 in 2024 or 2025. That will see humans put boot prints back on the lunar surface again. Fantastic. And our final question for this live uh, comes from Roniel. How many days will it take Artemis to reach the moon if it does launch today? Hmm. Uh, well, I, really, I think it's a good question. I think about 10 days. I hope I'm correct on that. That's a good question, Roniel. Well, I know the entire mission will take 26 days um, for the Orion spacecraft to orbit around and come back down to Earth. But uh, it's the... SLS vehicle will actually have to go around the Earth one time um, before then the Orion capsule will separate from the interim cryogenic proposal stage and then go back around the moon. So several days. Fantastic. Thank you so much for answering those, Brett. I will hand yeah. it to you to sign off. Hey, thanks a lot. Remember to tune back in in about three hours from now when uh, we'll begin our coverage of the fueling process. I believe we'll go live uh, at four o'clock, but starting at 3.30, you can watch the live stream courtesy of nasa.gov right on the space.com website. This is Brett Tingley signing off with space.com. Be sure to tune in. It's going to be a very exciting day.